Welcome friends, let's take a look at our serious solution for y prime equals y. So we have to assume that y first of all is expressible in the basic series as c sub 0 plus c sub 1 x to the first plus c sub 2 x to the second right plus c sub 3 x cubed plus c sub 4 x to the fourth plus dot dot dot. We have to assume that it's expressible in that form. So now let's differentiate term by term so y prime is equal to c sub 1 plus c sub 2, but then you got to bring the 2 down, so it's 2 times c sub 2 multiplied by x to the first, plus 3c sub 3x to the second, plus 4c sub 4x to the third, power rule on each term, plus dot dot dot. Notice that we are given a specific differential equation that tells you that the derivative is equal to the original function. So when you have polynomials like this, essentially just equate co coefficients. So that means that c sub 0 must be equal to c sub 1. It also then tells us that c sub 1 must be equal to 2c sub 2. Now, stop for a second. To make this work out, you likely want only as much as possible, like c sub 0 to occur in every term because they can be factored out. So that means I want to take c sub 1 divided by 2, to write that as c sub 2. But c sub 1 is equal to c sub 0, so I can say c sub 0 divided by 2 is equal to c sub 2. So notice that now c sub 1 is expressed, it's just equal to c sub 0. c sub 2 is c sub 0 over 2, which really, we remember, we can write as 2 times 1, okay? Go on to the next one, so let's see, c sub, equate the next pair, so that means the ones on x squared, so that means c sub 2 should be equal to 3c sub 0, so solve for c sub 0, I'm sorry, c sub 3, so c sub 2 divided by 3 is equal to c sub 3. Why would I do that? Because c sub 2 is already known to be c sub 0 over 2 times 1. So that means I can write c sub 0 over 3 times 2 times 1 as the value of c sub 3. So notice how this is working out. C sub 1 is in terms of Z sub 0. C sub 2 is in terms of C sub 0. C sub 3 is in terms of C sub 0. This is the last one that we can here. So C sub cubed is then equal to 4C sub 4, like this. Again, you just go corresponding one by corresponding one. So that means like specifically, you know, this one with this one, right? Like this one goes with this one, and now this one goes with this one, you see? So make sure you grab corresponding coefficients. That means then c sub 3 over 4 is equal to c sub 4. But c sub 3 is expressed already in terms of c sub 0. So that means I can write the following. c sub 0 divided by 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to c sub 4. So now I have enough coefficients expressed, period, period, period. That means just continue the pattern if you need it to. That I can write the following. y is equal to c sub 0. Okay, because that's equal to uh, c sub 0, that's it. Now c sub 1 is also plus c sub 0 times x to the first, plus, and then, so this normally would be c sub 1, right? But we know c sub 1 and c sub 0 are equals, that's why you put that here. Anyway, go on, so c sub 2 is c sub 0 over 2 times 1, and this is x to the second, plus c sub 0 over 3 times 2 times 1, and this would be the one that corresponds to x cubed, plus c sub 0 divided by 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This is the one that corresponds to x to the fourth, plus dot, dot, dot. Now notice something when you look at the expressions here. This is 2 times 1, and the power is 2. This is 3 times 2 times 1, and this is 3 up here. This is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and this is 4 up here. So that means specifically we can write y is equal to c sub 0 plus c sub 0 x plus c sub 0 over 2 factorial, really, you see? x to the second plus c sub 0 over 3 factorial, x to the third, plus c sub 0 and then 4 factorial, x to the fourth, plus dot dot dot. Lastly, notice that c sub 0 is present in every term, so you can write y is equal to c sub 0. Well, almost lastly, and then you have 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, plus x cubed over 3 factorial, plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. But the series within brackets is a well-known series, so that means we get in the end y is equal to c sub 0 e to the x.
And of course this makes sense, you don't have to do all of this, but it's a good place to begin to illustrate how to use serious concepts. What I mean is, for y prime to be equal to y, you can just guess that, you know, you have to have c e to the x, correct, as your function. For example, because when you differentiate this, it's c e to the x, and when you equate them, you have c e to the x equals c e to the x, which is certainly true. As if for this one, leave a like if it's been helpful.